you gotta see this show from Chernobyl, the mini series. I was hearing all this hype about it. I was like, damn, all these people are getting hyped to watch this Chernobyl miniseries. And I think it's great that it actually getting people to talk about Chernobyl and the effects and what has to be done after a meltdown. It's unspeakable, the horrors of Chernobyl. We only know a little percent of what really happened. But what we do know is... The people that stayed, a lot of them got cancer and died. Now, the official Soviet analysis is that only 37 people died. The liquidators were sent in, some even at gunpoint. For example, the miners. There was about 400 miners that they dig for coal. So they have this Soviet, higher-ranking Soviet official go there with two guys, two soldiers next to them with AK-47s. And the official goes, come with me. We need you to go do a job for us. And the leader of the coal digging men said, where are we going? He's like, that's classified. And he says, well, we need to know. And he says, no, you don't. And he says, well, you might as well just fire all your bullets at us then. He's like, you won't be able to kill us all and we'll eventually punch you to sleep. So the guy just comes clean and says, we're going to Chernobyl. And he's like, you know what happened there, right? And then he starts asking a few more questions. That's one thing you can say about the Russian people that a lot of people, they knew they were going to die. They knew they were going to get sick. And they did it anyway. They did it to save their countrymen. They did it to save their country. And ultimately, what they did is they saved parts of Europe as well. And this is a, a disaster that could have been a lot worse. The coal miners, if they didn't dig underneath the plant to release the water, that would have been a big disaster. So they were sent in the liquidators. About 100 out of those 400 miners, they died within a couple years. So right there, that's more than the official Soviet estimate. Not only that, but they conscripted over 700,000 men to Chernobyl. They were sent on the rooftops because they had to, to scrape off the graphite off the building because it was way too hot. They could only stay up there 90 seconds. A lot of those men died. They're saying that you can't look down. They're like, don't look down. Just push the graphite off. The radiation levels are so super hot. Their first helicopter pilot, when they realized we got to hit it with boron, we got to hit it with sand. When they sent that first helicopter pilot in, they realized this isn't going to work so good. They had bad angle because if they go right over the plume, the helicopter is just, first of all, it's going to cut off frequency to, to command. And second of all, that high plume just hit the helicopter and the guys are pretty much, their organs are melting right on the spot. So they lost their first helicopter pod. They actually see the helicopter crash into the into the reactor. And then it's when they know that it was going to be a lot harder than they thought. They sent a bunch of choppers up there. And a lot of good men died trying to save their countrymen. And that, I got to give props to the Russians that did that. And a lot of people look at that and say, well, that's just stupid what they did. But they did what they had to do. That was the only thing they could do at, the, at that time. Even the technology they pointed out. They were supposed to use a robot to scrape off the graphite off the roof, supposedly. And I know this is probably going to piss off Putin, too, that they told the Germans the estimates of the radiation were lower. So when they built the robot, it wasn't built to withstand the radiation because so the radiation was much higher. So within a minute of they putting the robot on top of the Chernobyl blown out reactor, that the robot which pretty much went off in less than a minute. What do you know? Same things happened at Fukushima. We don't have the technology yet. So we don't have the shielding capable that's going to be light enough, strong enough to withstand radiation. You lost hundreds, maybe thousands of helicopter pilots. You lost maybe tens of thousands of men that were conscripted to the Chernobyl zone. These numbers of 37, obviously, are way off from the Soviet estimates. They look like a bunch of liars, and just to save face. And that's the problem, is they were trying to save money. And that's the problem with nuclear technology, always will be a problem, is there's always going to be somebody cutting corners. There's always going to be somebody trying to save money and do things cheaper. It's trillions of dollars to do it the right way. So when it comes down to it, nuclear technology, it's flawed. And it's super expensive if you try to do it right. And there's always going to be somebody cutting the corner. Not only did they kill people in Belarus, 
in Ukraine, in the western part of Russia, this plume from Chernobyl went around the world. Cancers were increasing all around the world. Many different illnesses. These DNA flips changes. They affect the newest offspring. It goes down the offspring and it gets passed on to a new generation of these DNA defects. These DNA defects, you know, people just say, oh, he's defective. But, you know, really, a lot of these things were brought on from Chernobyl, from the nuclear detonations, the nuclear tests. And then now we have Fukushima. And I'm really surprised, the Chernobyl series, of how honest they were in the series. I didn't think it was possible in the United States that you would see a show like Chernobyl where they show you the horror of nuclear energy when it goes wrong. You have a few things that come together and you can have a serious accident. You no know, diesel generators in Fukushima, they're underwater, knocked out, busted pipes. Too many things can go wrong. Really sad. Some parts I even admit, you know, I even sh almost shed a tear in a couple of moments. The wife, she wants to, to see the one of the engineers at the plant. Young guy. Uh, he was only 25, but when you looked at him, he looked like he was 65. You know, what radiation, how it makes you age. And she lied to get in there because they asked her if she was pregnant. She said, no, I'm not pregnant. What comes if she was pregnant? And then the lady also said, don't touch him and only stay for 30 minutes. Well, she ended up staying there trying to take care of her husband. She didn't know how bad it was. She thought he was just burned. But he was so radioactive that her be just being around him was a threat to her unborn child. And she actually had a lethal dose herself. But the child absorbed most of the radiation in the womb. The baby only lived for four days. The baby actually saved her life because the baby absorbed the radiation. And the baby died within four days. So that, that moment like really got to me. I was like, wow, man. Because kids, there's over a million kids throughout Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, that even to this day, they're locked up where people can't see them, but they're there. Mentally retarded, severely deformed. There were some really sad moments. Another sad moment, I'm sorry, I'm giving you some spoilers here. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the series, you might want to just fast forward a few minutes. Another sad moment for me in the film is when they send out people. To go shoot the animals. The animals that were left behind by the people. Because they were afraid that these animals would travel out of the exclusion zone. This young kid, they give him, it might not be an AK, but it's it's some type of rifle. And he's probably barely 19. And he's with some older compadres. One of the older comrade guys, he went, who's in Afghanistan. So he saw a lot of bad things. And he's like, look, first thing, you don't point that gun at me. And second thing. You don't let the animals suffer. You shoot them and you keep shooting until they're dead. It makes sense. You don't want animals to suffer in pain. And they had to kill these animals because they were so worried of them traveling out of the exclusion zone and carrying that radiation into other parts of Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. There's even animals to this day in Germany, the pigs, they're too radioactive to eat in some parts. There's even some parts of Scotland where they can't sell the land because it's contaminated from Chernobyl thousands of miles away it's just unbelievable that even to this day we did not learn the lessons that nuclear power is just too dangerous there's always going to be a flaw somewhere there's always going to be the human error the human element there could be a, a war there's just so many things that can go wrong that if you don't have the right conditions that these meltdowns happen i mean the nuclear waste just builds up and i could give you several examples that the nuclear waste they always go for the cheaper option. And that was the thing here in the film that they point out that this type of reactor design, that the control rods, that the tips were actually coated with the graphite. So the safety control sent it to the final explosion. In this film, toward the end, that's basically what they say is that it was a fatal flaw design in the cooldown process when they insert the rods. They wanted to blame the test, the, the way it was done, and they did a lot of bad things during their tests, doing a lot of unsafe procedures, but they were depending on that safety switch that was a fatal flaw 
with the graphite tips. I guess Russia, you know, Putin, he's really pissed off. He sees this as a total embarrassment. He wants to make his own Chernobyl film. He can go right ahead and make his own Chernobyl film if that makes him feel better. Putin could spend a billion dollars trying to make a Chernobyl film like the HBO series and it still wouldn't be as good. I am so shocked that HBO would put out this miniseries because a lot of people are actually into it. They want to see a Chernobyl Part 2. You know, we might even see a Fukushima miniseries from HBO kind of set up like this. And I think it would be good. There's still a lot of information that we don't know about Fukushima. I would love to see them do the same thing. And now we're going to have Putin try to make his own series where he's actually going to try to blame. I guess he's going to try to blame the Americans for the explosion of Chernobyl. I don't know what to think of that. I mean, some people have other theories. Back to the the crazy part about those animals that were just too radioactive. They didn't want to have any chance of getting out of the radioactive zone. That they shot and killed the dogs, the cats, the pigs, the cows. They would have to gather up these animals and they would put them in pits and then put them in concrete. You know, their body as it decays would still stay in some type of concrete and not go right immediately into the soil and get absorbed and go into the river. So that was another sad thing is the lady that I was telling you when she was pregnant, she's at the funeral. And can you imagine the casket? First, they nailed down the casket of a man. Next step, they coat his uh, coffin with lead. They got the bodies in a casket, nailed down, and then they have a lead casket on top of that. And then they have a welder go around and weld the whole lead casket shut. That's how radioactive these people were. And then they dig a 20-foot hole, 20-foot deep, maybe about 100 feet across. There's about 15 caskets in there. They're buried together in these lead caskets. And they just dump about 20 feet of concrete on top. They had to do what they had to do at that time. And then you see the kid, first animal he shoots, he kind of hesitates. And the guy that served in Afghanistan, the comrade that served over in Afghanistan, just goes up to him and he says, You don't freaking hesitate. You don't let the animal suffer. First thing, you don't point that gun at me. You don't let the animal suffer or I'll shoot you myself. So you wonder, is he going to shoot him when he goes up to him because he's hesitating? The guy gives a story about how he served over in Afghanistan, how he accidentally shoot a guy in the chest. And he's like, that's it. I'm never going to be the same again. And then, you know, they're drinking their vodka or whatever, and he's just trying to get him to just, like, chill out the kid and tell him the story. He's like, look, you know, I woke up, you know, I realized I am the same person, but what I, I had to do what I had to do. Next thing you know, the kid's just popping animals. But then he goes into a house, and then he sees some puppies with the mother just looking at him. Because, you know, these dogs, they, you know, they, they, they see humans, and they, they get happy. He just didn't even know what to do. He couldn't shoot little puppies. And the guy that served in Afghanistan goes in there, and he says, leave. He doesn't want the kid to see it. And as the kid gets out, you can you hear the bullet shooting. He's probably shot the mother first, and then he had to shoot the puppies. Very moving film. It's must-watch TV. You got to see it. I'm really surprised that they had the cojones, the balls, to actually make a film like this, showing the suffering, the pain, and realizing that the Soviet Union had to lose about 3,000 kilometers of land just to be out of the containment zone because this water would travel. That's where Japan got the idea where they have to take out the topsoil. You have to take out a foot of topsoil. The topsoil is the best land that you can find. It takes about a hundred years to make just an inch of topsoil. So imagine you take a foot. You're taking a thousand years of the biodiversity in the soil and you're basically just having to fill that all away. And what's left is garbage soil, and you can't farm it anyway. It's contaminated to some degree, but they were so worried that it's going to get picked up, go into the rainwater. It's like we never really learned our lesson. The Fukushima is just another example of failed nuclear technology that you have a few things go wrong. You have a situation, an extinction level event. The yeah, Chernobyl was terrible. Chernobyl was bad, but Chernobyl was the second worst nuclear disaster in the world and Fukushima is the first disaster in the world because with Chernobyl it was one reactor unlike Fukushima we have three reactors that had lots of spent fuel that went up into the air and not only Fukushima Daiichi but Fukushima Daini and you don't hear people talk about Daini 
When you think of Fukushima, nobody talks about Daini. But there was explosions at Daini as well. We saw the fires at Daini. If you're checking the radiation levels a year after, you would see the Daini levels were, were super high as well. Not as high as Fukushima Daiichi. They didn't have the blowouts there like that. But there was some type of meltdown at Daini. You don't hear about that. So to compare the two between Chernobyl and Fukushima, you can't do it. You can't. Even after watching this film and see how bad Chernobyl was, realizing that you can't go in the ocean and scrape the ocean of the radiation. No, it's in there. And they keep saying, oh, it's going to dilute. It's going to dilute. Dilute where? That dilute just means it spreads. You would really hope that radiation would not dilute. You would like it to get all in one space and collect it. But dilute means it's everywhere. It's in every living thing in the Pacific Ocean. There's Fukushima in your body right now. All of our bodies. We're all contaminated to some degree. There's probably pieces of Chernobyl in our body as well. And you see the heart disease, the strokes. There's a lot of blame to go around why people are getting sick. We haven't learned our lessons from Fukushima. You know where I live, they're building two more nuclear power plants 20 miles away from here. And guess what they want to do with the nuclear waste? They want to put it underneath the aquifer that sends water to the Florida Keys and the water of South Miami. They say, oh, the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, says, oh, it's safe. We're going to put it there. But how do you put water underneath the aquifer? Are you going to be able to check that out? I think that's a terrible place to put nuclear waste. They know these aquifers connect. And they also know that there's probably water that from the aquifer that leaks out into the bay. Biscayne Bay, very beautiful. You ever been to Biscayne Bay? You've heard of it? Well, we're in between Biscayne Bay and the Everglades. And you imagine those two national parks being contaminated from Turkey Point. As of right now, our radiation monitor's turned off. So I don't know what's going on. And uh, I even went down to Turkey Point when I had an inspector. Thanks to Miss Milky the Clown, she let me borrow it. I went down there, I wanted to get some readings, I wanted to get near the property, but I didn't realize when, it, when I went down by the Florida Keys, that FPNL had bought out all the land, and they had a sign that said, we're building this area, it's a felony to go into this area. It's, it's a swamp, basically, next to the ocean. When you think about the Gulf Stream, it goes up the Florida coast from the bay, and it sends it right into Miami Beach. You know how packed those beaches get. Those beaches are full. South Beach, it's a popular great place to go. And, you know, swimmers, all ladies like to go there with their G-string and all that. I'm, I know I'm getting way off topic here, but I just wanted to point out that nuclear energy is a dead end. It's a dead end for the world. We need to learn from our mistakes. We need to learn from Fukushima. We need to learn from Three Mile Island. We need to learn from Chernobyl. Nuclear energy, there's a price to pay, and the price is way too steep. And I just hope that people can at least look at the horrors of Chernobyl, the horrors of Fukushima, and come to the conclusion that there's got to be a better way. And there is. Unfortunately, it's not about energy. It's about weapons, and it's about radioactive isotopes that they can use to make lasers. I was talking before about this Andrew Yang in my last video. I got some of his supporters that came in and it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Andrew Yang's a great guy. He's going to ultimately end nuclear power. But I don't think so. He's really big on this thorium. And he even seems to support nuclear power as well. I went through his father's patents. He, he was bragging, oh, my father worked for GE and he made 57 patents for GE. You know what? If my father worked for GE. That's something I would be disgraced to say because how can you be proud that your father worked for GE when they're the ones who designed the nuclear reactors that blew up at Fukushima? How can you be proud of that? That's a disgrace. I was going through all of his father's patents. All of his father's patents were revolving around radioactive isotopes, making different type of laser beams, things like that. It's That's what they want. They want the technology of those radioactive isotopes to make all type of things. All type of dangerous things because they leak. You can go through the NRC reports and there's about five or six problems they report per day. That's just what goes reported. We don't know what goes unreported. 
hopefully the world will wake up before it's too late. I'm not counting on it. I think it's only a matter of time. It could be days, weeks, months, maybe for lucky years. But the radiation is trickling down. And a lot of people aren't around that were around 2011. I know so many people that got sick, started having problems after 2011. A lot of people have died. That person dies. They're not buried in lead. Maybe there's some of those radioactive isotopes get out and they kill other people again. That's why Pripyat and Chernobyl, that the people were put in lead caskets and covered with cement. I urge you, please look at that Chernobyl film on HBO. Find it. It's worth it to buy it and, and watch that sucker because it's a wake-up call. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Take care.